we did see Rezo play it last game in the safe lane. They played it mid. Yuar plays a lot of DK. Rezo doesn't mind playing it because he just itemizes and plays a bit greedier when needed. So yeah, I don't know if I like it that much against Morana. Feels a little scary there, but even still, uh, he'll probably just buy a Maelstrom and Morana. Um, mm -hmm. Dragonite might have some issues there, but yeah, throwing stuns uh, kind of goes both ways, I guess. You stun him first. It's a great pairing with Wraith King as well. It's like they just grab uh, the one stun guy, the Wraith King guy to start off, and then any other stuns past that yeah. just makes um, ganking kind of straightforward. And also, like the point you touched on earlier is you have two heroes you want to ignore, but you, you can't ignore everyone. Mm -hmm. Ogre, Ogre is a third. You <laughs> you don't want to really throw too much at him. He, uh, later on, you know, he's a support. He's not going to have item. You can yeah. see very quickly burst an Ogre down. I mean, if he gets like a Glimmer Cape or something, that's where things get real hard yeah. for, for heroes like Weaver or Marana hitting the back line. If that guy just goes invis for five seconds and be a pain in the butt. Um, even Dark Willow is actually a really hard a really hard hero to kill this game. Marana and Weaver are very right click heavy, but if Dark Willow just uses Shadow Realm, like, good luck. All right. Am I going crazy? Have there always been candles? Uh, is that new? I'm not sure. I just saw this. I looked up at the little preview screen. I was like, "What? There's candles? Is that on the? Is that in Dota? And yeah, they're they're in Dota. I mean, how else are you gonna summon demons and stuff, right? Yeah. You gotta. There's candles on the side too. I just never saw the ones in the the middle. Uh, the foreground. Yeah. yeah, the foreground ones. Okay. Yeah, maybe okay. always been there. I guess uh, Oracle picked up here. Um, decent solution against um, chain stuns. Um, mm -hmm. Sit in the back, cover somebody like Weaver or Marana if needed. Generally works better with tanky heroes, but um, they can also dispel uh, bloodlust from enemies. That's pretty good. Um, they can um, uh, disarm heroes like Dragonite Wraith King. That isn't bad either. Anything else you're seeing that makes Oracle really good? Feels a little off to me right here as a pick. It's the drow ban. We were I'm... Right. Yeah, I wonder if they have something in mind that's going to pair with it with their last pick, like that scary frontline. Because, yeah, it, there's no... These Mirana Weavers are heroes that can get instantly burst, and maybe Oracle doesn't have a chance to save them. I mean, Oracle as a support versus a Dark Willow is probably really good. You can always yeah. defend yourself. Single Fates Edict. Done. Uh, uh, Curse Crown. Dispel. Like, there's yep. things like that I think is... I think the, the Oracle versus Dark Willow is maybe a super hard counter. Yeah, the dispels against Dark Willow in general are very problematic. Yep. Good Kanka. So. And so this is, rather than having, like, tanky heroes at frontline, it's sometimes easier just to do it this way. Just, like, we're going to X-combo you repeatedly and mm -hmm. uh, always force you to be in a place you don't necessarily want to be. Um, can be a one really good way to deal with this. So I, I like the Kunkka pick, actually. I think this is, uh, is a cool draft by Secret. Like what they did here. Sticking to kind of that Ten slight seconds. element of comfort, too. Something that mid one is played a decent amount of. See how VGJ Storm decide to react to this one. Definitely can send DK in against Kunk if they want to. Can also shouldn't Kunk win though, because he can just like power deny with Tidebringer. Like I, cause... I think it's a slightly Kunk fate, maybe like sixty forty. I don't think it's. I just feel like he'd side. get out harassed, and if they gank, it's kind of scary for Dragonite. Yeah, and... that's definitely true. But... Okay, Vector. so. Basically, it's pretty farm heavy for VGJ Storm, but it's great at gap closing. And because of the heroes that Secret has, again, very, um, very relatively squishy, not very frontline y. Sp a hero like Spectre, if he gets farmed enough, can instantly hit back lines and really deal a lot of damage yeah. to the right heroes. And I feel like Spectre gets a bad rap about the being this hero. You know, you got to farm a lot of them. It's super greedy. It's not like Anti Mage to me. You actually contribute with your ultimate earlier on. Mm -hmm. Like, you can come to those first few fights, you can go for a fast. Blade mail if you want to, and actually have an impact pre radiance. Unlike Anti Mage, yeah. I feel like until you have Battle Fury Manta, you're not really doing much, unless there's like a Storm or someone who you could show up in Mana Void. Absolutely. But usually the issue with Spectre is that the laning stage is a little too pressured generally, mm -hmm. but maybe he can hold things off, uh, hold them off this game. Maybe Spec Ogre is that the move? Yeah. Just get the give the tanky boy there and trade hits? They're both pretty strong laning supports and. Shaker, I would say, is not a strong laning support, so while uh, the Mirana can be annoying, you're not looking at, like, a Mirana with another harasser or heavy harasser. It'd still be double melee, though. Um, yeah. It's like that that problem. I, I guess what they kind of did the previous game, right, was put the... Just make one of your dual lanes really strong, like a Dark Willow Wraith King would be solid, mm -hmm. and then uh, make your other one just defensive, I guess. Do your best on spec. Yep. 
mean, they can certainly he can he can show up to a lot of kills. Yeah, be really impactful. You don't so. need your Spectre to be like free farming and top of the net worth. It's not like Alchemist as well. Another hero, like if you have an Alchemist, and you're not top of the net worth. They're like 10, 15 minutes getting good range time. You're in trouble. Spectre can claw her way back into the game. Let's see how the lanes turn out at least. Uh, yep, does kind of look like a Spectre Ogre Magi to start things off. You are going to do Dragon in the mid lane, no surprise there, and a Dark Willow plus Wraith King dual off lane. And uh, on the side of Secret, at least for now, uh, Kunkka mid, very expected, and then uh, looking like Ace the Weaver is going to go to the top lane, maybe covered by an Earthshaker. Sounds like an okay lane. Uh, maybe Puppy rotating bottom to meet up with the Marana. That makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, channel Fortune's yep. End, or uh, yeah, Fortune's End to land a long second route, which guarantees an arrow in a lot of cases. So it would be a good way to deal with that. Let the ogre eat all the arrows, I guess. So we'll see how well VGJ can enable this specter, or if it's just going to be a, a tough lane for him this time around. Two sentries here for Dark Will, actually. Okay. We need yeah. to make sure they win the I sentry war. Makes sense, because if, if you have vision of Weaver, then yeah. your stun's going to hit no matter what. Yeah, but, and you hear, like, you mentioned the Wraith King, one of the things where Weaver can beat Wraith King in lane is being able to dodge Wraith Fire. Can't, can't let him have that. It would be way too good. Yep. If he Shikuchi's in for a last hit, you stun him once, you Bramble Maze on top, he Shikuchi ends, and it's an incredibly long cooldown at early levels. Puppy is all about the Fairy Fires here. Picking up two. Loving start, it. start some damage against Snake King. Throws the stun. Who's getting the Bounty Rune? It's going to go the way of VGJ. They get three out of four. They take a lot of damage though on snaking initially for it. Ooh, extra bramble maze on pop. <laughs> that damage. So valuable. Yeah. Uh pretty pretty good bramble. That was like three brambles or something. Four brambles. Yep. Not bad for a level one skill. Uh but the bounty rings will definitely make a bit of an advantage. Uh I mean Dragonite getting um more gauntlets earlier is kind of nice, I guess. One of these heroes gonna head. Yep, sir, around the mid lane looks to be headed towards bottom. Don't think you want to leave Fata alone against a Spectre who will free farm with the help of the Ogre down here if the Shaker doesn't do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. And he actually doesn't have lead. This is going to be a little bit of a negative trade here. Yep. Ogre is so good at uh, abusing heroes in this way. I'm a little surprised. I guess Fata must have gone for an arrow on the on the bounty or something. Look at this. He's just losing his lane. He yep. doesn't even have a salve, actually. And Yepsor doesn't have one either. So this is going to be a low HP Marana for, for quite a bit of time here. Yep. And he's just going to keep just tossing right. the Ignite. Daggers back up. They'll throw another one. They'll throw another Ignite. Uh, yeah, Fata does, doesn't even want to come in close for a last hit. He just wants to arrow a neutral, but... Doesn't even look like the newt spawn in the right position to get that easy arrow off. And SVG in a position as well to take the take the experience yes. in case they really wanted to go for that arrow, which kind of defeats nice. a lot of the purpose. So he's doing a great job uh, leveraging Ogre to make this worthwhile. Yep. Really nicely done early on. And this is where I think the Spectre felt like a pick you could get away with because Shaker is just not all that present in lane. We're going to see another attempt on Fata. Getting him down low, chewing through that region. You don't have to get these kills. You just have to make him eat Tango's and have a rough time. Whereas Rezo, he's got five Tangos in the south left. Fata is going to be down to just a couple Tangos. Yep, and now picking up his passive, so any more trading that they do is advantageous and a really good start for them. Oh, SVG picks up two from the neutral. Yeah, Hopefully oh, he good. got the XP. Nice. Uh, picks up Fire Blast, so more chase potential. Fissure to guarantee that last hit on the range creep. And yep. A lot of focus on harassing still. How's the top lane going? Oh. Um, Snake King sitting at 8 and 2 versus Aces 10 and 1, so it's still very even. They do have a Sentry Ward down, looks like. Um, That's a, the Dire Sentry, though. Yeah, it looks like Dark Will has already used one yes. so far, and this will be their D Ward, I'm sure, if they oh, can. They don't find it immediately, but. Okay. What? Oh, okay. Eventually. Okay. Those, those are hard to click. I have done that way yeah. too many times where it's like I'm against a tree, and you're like, all right, I'm going to put my Sentry down, and immediately Tango his, and you click a tree, and you're like, crap. It's the worst feeling, man. I, or you're quelling blade, and then it's on cooldown, so he takes out your ward, and you're uh, just like, okay, 100 gold down the drain. Yeah, that one sounds painful for sure. Little side pull going on for MSS. He's going to contest it a little bit here, but really just trying to not make, make sure they can't get free farm out of it. So uh, DK mid found a double damage room, which is helping Jeez. negate some of the CS advantage of Kunkka, who was leading, and is going to use his early X to just take a little fountain trip. That's pretty good. He got about uh, 500 HP out of it. Def yep. Definitely worth it. Still focusing on healing. The Absor is going to mess up with the pull, mess up the pull, pull the creeps around. Similar to those other Earthshaker games. Yep. Um, large camp didn't get blocked here, so. So still. <laughs> get out of here, man. Yeah, he wants to zone him. Knows that there's no creep wave of his own coming, so he can just kind of run forward, use this 
Stout Shield and regen advantage that he has. He's still got three Tangos in the south, but uh, meanwhile with zero regen left, has some Tangos back at base, but that's very far away. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad moment when you're kind of losing the lane like this, and you're like, let me finish my Wraith Band and bring an extra <laughs> yeah. Tango out because I'm out of regen. That's not a good place to be. Yeah. Back at top, so. uh, it does look like Secret have regained the Sentry advantage, as we we're talking about earlier. They put down a Sentry of their own, dewarded VGJ Sentry, so that's their second Sentry, but it's going to give Ace a much easier lane. Well, it's uh, you know, it's going to keep re uh, Weaver alive and engagements and stuff. But either way, they've got decent levels. Like Puppy can heal him if needed and stuff. Yep. And stage is still going kind of even. Look, it looks like he really wants to block this. Actually, I don't even get an observer ward with it if he. Yep. I'm just going to mess with the pull, I guess. Blocks the follow up wave spawning, so that means that they should be able to lane control no problem here. This rune up top mid one, looking to make sure he gets it with the. Exxon, he will be successful, but it's just an invis, not a regen-esque rune that he was perhaps hoping for. They don't even have bottles anyways, so this is more of like a little game too. Yep. Limit some advantage there. Never know yet if it could be like a arcane rune, a DD, I mean, DD already spawned, so it wasn't going to be that, but still something important to keep tabs off. But I mean, considering how this game's going so far, I, I think they've got to be a little scared on secret that uh, yeah. Rezo has had such a good start. That's not where you want to be. He's still got a tango and a self. He's got 900 gold past his boots, meaning he can just rush a really fast Vanguard. I did not catch that one, but we can imagine what happened. Swarm was used, Shikuchi, and the... Probably a couple... This is the level 3 Oracle. He kind of hits a peak here in the laning stage where yeah. he does a huge amount of burst damage. That was a huge fight to win, though, because they're going to be able to get a double bounty as a result. Yep. Ace will grab this one. Oh. Rune. There's a bit of a fight going out down. It's going to be close. Semesis might get it. Oh, he just denies it. Playing it safe. And Secret get the bottom bounty runes. So couple of stuns three. and spells being traded. Through that mid one. Kind of in a little close fight yeah. here. Oh, with he's going for the kill. He's got to cleave in a couple of seconds, and yeah, tower will help him out. That's like the best place to X, right within the tower range, man. Get some free tower attacks in. I, I didn't catch the lead up to it, unfortunately, but you know, what do you expect? I'm yeah. only at a good at observing late game or something like that. <laughs> Laning stage? No, no way. Those are nice kills for Seeker because, like you say, they've got to be a little bit concerned about the Spectre status. They don't know that he's top of the CS, but they know he is farming very, very well. He's picked up a Vitality Booster now. Things are not in particularly good shape for them. Yes, it's very scary. Having a Salve and a Vitality Booster, it's just... It's like, I'll just get more raw HP. There's no way that I'm going to get outlaned right now, so... Yeah. Really good place. Um, looking like a gank to the bot lane, bringing a salve here to Marana. Uh, they could do a fissure setup into arrow, maybe. Got Wall the, the torrent. Too. What yep. an engagement! Nice move. They recognize this problem. They immediately address it with the first Kunkka rotation down bottom. They use the shrine to even give Kunkka back his health and mana, and it's not going to be just the Spectre. It looks like they may get SVG as well. Still have to chase him down a bit further, but they will succeed in doing so as mid one. It's his team two down bottom. Such a good rotation. The uh, the fact that he went for the blind torrent um, for the skill shot was was so good. Um, Fissure afterwards, the boat, just tons of damage, and the raw HP just actually didn't help all the way, surprisingly. So I feel TP back down, knowing that now things get a little bit safer. But Kunkka's ghost ship a pretty short cooldown to play around. Could very well see mid one look to rotate down bottom. Fifteen seconds is when his ult is up as well as his TP scroll. I mean, that net worth is uh, it's making a big difference for mid one with that kill. Top lane, they're going in. I think they should be able to bring down Snaking here. Earthshaker's moved in. Oh, Ooh, misses Nuke actually. Hit the wrong person. It's another four Purifying Flames in a second, but they're not going to need it. This is one of those games where Wraith King does not feel very strong, that's for sure. Um, Fortune's End making a difference. Like, mm -hmm. the, the disable into follow-up really long duration disable against a melee hero that's to walk out slowly. Just can't deal with that much. It doesn't nuke. really get easier. Weaver diffusal is almost certainly going to be the item I feel, and that makes life very difficult. Yeah, 50, 50 a hit. Finishes a wand. He's got a thousand gold in the bank. Maybe he'll rush him. Maybe he'll go treads first. See what he ends up with. But Snake King can't feel too good. Um, does he just go? Yeah, it looks like he's just going to start rotating. I guess that's better than sitting in his lane. Um, killing Kunkka sounds very difficult though, uh, but maybe with the Dark Willow they There's can do this. Shaker and now a Oracle TP. They get the Oracle TP out just with the stun being used though, so... Not terrible, yeah. but that was Snake King rotating, so... <laughs> he, he doesn't have a lane up top, so I guess it's, it's better than nothing. Trying to just get the most out of what you can, and the situation is very much, let's, uh, you know, let's hope Rezo carries us.
Yeah, it's kind of a mirror situation, right? Spectre's still free farming. Nobody's in his lane. Same goes for Weaver, but I, I guess you, I guess in a typ typical situation, you take the yep. the uh, the Spectre over the the Weaver here. Yeah. The problem is, you know, the the pressure's coming soon. Spectre's had this free farm lane for like you know ninety percent of the lane stage, other than the Kunkel rotation. But Weaver with the Diffusal's going to maybe come to his lane soon. There's going to be problems when Mirana gets levels when. The mid Kunkka comes back, so it's not going to be easy from here on out. MSS in trouble, very likely to die here. Yep. Gets caught. Bug stays attached to you, even though your body's still in the shadow realm. I don't know how that works out, but. Uh, it's true. Give me a stun here on mid. Oh, and a dagger, too. First horn of the game coming mid, but mid one's going to have a lot of damage block here, and the ghost ship actually hits both Fissure as well, so it does look like mid one is going to quite easily survive in a. In a way, did have raindrops which have been very quickly chewed through. Well, that's, that's still a tanky, you know, he's a uh, tanky Kunkka. It's yep. 1500 HP plus the boat to delay things. The uh, man on Dragonite was a bit low too. They're thinking about trying to kill him here. But I don't think they'll be able to snag that one. A uh, pretty uh -huh. big loss actually to go for a haunt like that and not secure the kill though. It's expensive. He has to yes. walk all the way back to the bot lane now. Didn't have face boots yet. So he's got to walk there slowly. That, that hurts the net worth. And normally you want to time that first one with almost like a guaranteed short kill and DK would be a big one if they actually managed to get it. But back bottom Rezo will continue to farm, has a little small item skewed up, Aquila into treads, going for a very tanky stat base build. I like this this game, just lots of raw HP against the magic burst and then lots of aqua pickup against things like Weaver is just a really good way to make your HP go farther. But here comes the gank on snaking, will he pop his ulti for this one? Doesn't look like he wants to. Just gonna eat the death and um, again triple bounty rune for for secret here. They're doing a much better job playing around bounties this game. Yeah, they they're timing these moves around them and moonlight shadow, get a kill, get the bounty runes, very nicely done. So I feel like there's been a lot of action around moonlight shadow today, and almost all the streams yeah. we watched. This feels like such a such a hard thing to play against. Like if you don't have a sentry set up, boom, that's a kill. On an important hero in a lot of cases. Trade it for and smoke. And if you're like gonna that. make sure you always have sentries, that's a lot of money that supports have to spend. Exactly. And that only sometimes pays off. You know, over the course of a game, that's like one less item, maybe. Like you're losing, you're missing out on a four staff, for example. That was, you know, no, no tails game when he was playing Enchantress. It was yep. just, you know, he had to buy too many sentries. Darkwell is able to pick up six though, uh, doing some jungling. Rezo at eight, working towards tread. Just a lot of passivity out of uh, Storm. Definitely reminiscent of their previous games. Looks like it's gonna be a drum Dragonite game this time. Okay. A bit different, interesting. Going on snaking again, top lane, see if they uh, cover him, but... Oh, what a sick juke, that, did you see that? Yeah, that was so cool. Cuts the tree to go to the north. Throws a stun, no ult, no team, still no team. Ooh. Okay, misses the boat damage at least, that okay. buys him some time, pops yeah. his ulti. He's asking for backup now, he's like, hey guys, uh, any time? Anyone coming, there's first CP from the Willow, there's a second coming as well from Spectre, they wanna fight this one. Rezo shows up, goes on Puppy, wants to get these kills for his team, and Snaking staying alive, still has one charges, and here's the Bedlam. It's been split, but that's okay, because they're nice and low here, as mid one's trying to get out of here, but without the Ghost Ship anymore, he's in trouble. Torrent gets nicely dodged by Rezo, he's got another dagger, and he's gonna chase him down. That's a big, big kill, 340 gold, going Rezo's way. Weaver can't really be brought down here, but great call from Snaking. Level the ulti, come on in, team. I, if I was him, I would have been screaming, dude, by the time that those TPs came in. That took forever, yeah. <laughs> but... I mean, dodging that first torrent was so impactful. Because if not, he would have been dying right here under the tower. Instead, it's all the way over by a shrine. Makes a big difference, so great great teleports. It works out. Ogre's build kind of interesting, going three points of Fire Blast this game. Ooh. And there was a very tiny buff to Ignite recently. Five more damage per level, so... Um, yes, it's a pretty respectable nuke once you hit six, and there's a yep. pretty so it's sixty percent chance to get a, a two times cast. So it actually becomes like a normal nuke. Yeah, that's where the big buff was to the multicast chance, and that's where leveling up fire blast just yep. is going to give you a lot more damage output. Uh, I guess they're just trying to burst down Weaver. Is maybe the thought like throw one stun, throw a follow up yep. stun, drop some fire blast, maybe get a kill. Kind of so interesting. They're not doing. getting any points in in bloodlust. Yeah, that's uh, very atypical for sure. Snaking ends up dying. We don't need to look. He didn't have his ulti. It was probably easy. But, uh, leave a solo kill from Weaver. Just finding him keeping back the lane, yeah. Very attack. deep dive from the Weaver, who's getting closer and closer to, to this Diffusal Blade. We'll come at a pretty respectable time, but 
same time, Rezzer's just farming better, farming more. Queuing up blade mail um, will be pretty good against heroes like basically everybody. I mean, Kunkka combos, Earthshaker stuff. Blade Mill, lots of raw HP, is gonna kill people before he dies at yep. least. It's always just that much better of an item when you're against this like unpreventable damage, like these AoE things which you're gonna, like you see a ghost ship coming, you know you can always Blade Mill that damage. You get X, hey, you're gonna pop a Blade Mill. And Blade Mill, like ghost ship slash current. Oh, terrorize into Maze, and they're gonna catch mid one here. Does get off the ghost ship now, but the damage has already been done. He's already incredibly low here. Luckily, there's an Oracle showing up to save the day. You are once get a stun out, instead finds Puppy, but he gets disjointed by the invis. Not having the detection there, being punished. You are gets brought back with the X here. He's still very, very tanky. Can they actually bring him down here? Snaking doesn't have ultimate just yet, but he's still full on health. He instantly stuns Mirana as she leaps in. Echo Slam comes, but it's not gonna save Fata. He's done for. And you are actually healing up thanks to. Puppy's purifying flames, so that was so close. The stun from Wraith King absolutely changed things there. If he, if he doesn't wow. stun the Marana, Marana gets Star Storm off. We could see maybe heroes like Ogre Magi get bursted, maybe uh, MSS as well. But that's done just barely in time. It's a big, big fight for them as they'll fall back, get a nice little group shower, hit the jungle, slap each other on the butts a little bit, say nice <laughs> job, and yep. uh, get back out there on the map. That's some, some NA Dota in a nutshell right there. And Things looking overall good for them. I, I like the adjustment in your, your war's build. I mean, oh, he didn't play DK last game, but it's very different style of build. This drums, blink dagger. He knows his job is to create space. Oh, they're gonna get this kill. That is Maybe. Oh, oh great save. Okay. Use Fate's edict to stop the magic. And, and there's also a DK stun. Okay, still get him. Really good attempt by Puppy here. Maybe grab a Wraith King, but he's got ulti. That's gonna slow Fata down. That's his last leap, actually. Oh, he's gotta get out of here. Do they have follow up? They do. Using their little feet. Great damage block once again, but they catch Earthshaker They're gonna too. catch everyone at this rate. Rezzer's found Puppy on the back lines here, gonna help secure that kill. Doesn't actually get the last hit, unfortunately. Yep, so it brings down the Willow, but can Rezzo clean up? It sure as hell looks like it. Uh, another kill that just doesn't go his way, but I don't think he's gonna be complaining too much because of how well this game is going for VGJ Storm. Yes, uh, considering that, against, that they still have a Spectre, they're, they're on a great trajectory here. Um, Right under a tier one tower. They probably won't be able to finish this off, but some good damage being dealt at least. Yeah. Um, Kunkka still kind of farming passively towards uh, a Halberd again. Winning the early game with Spectre is always a fantastic sign for things to come. Rizzo will not get the tower to nigh up top. Unfortunately, the Siege Creep just doing a bit too much damage. And bottom lane, Secret should get the tower tonight. May not notice, we'll see. Almost a Feasible Blade on Weaver as well. Picks up the Mana Break talent, so... That's where things are going to get really tough for, for the yeah. Wraith King here. That act does change the game. He does have the one, so 21. You're always going to want to stock up your one charges and try and use it as you're about to die. Oh my god, That's this Weaver is being hunted. God. <laughs> Chain stun galore. That was so dirty. I mean, he got, a, he got an Invis rune for free, but still. Uh, Fire Blast gets the multicast, and then two other heroes with disable. So. The Ogre is actually working out pretty well, I must say. Yeah, so spot snaking, teeping in, but he's in trouble. He's surrounded by skeletons. Can't really get out of this one. Does get helped up by the Oracle. That it's gonna save his life a little bit longer here. You are stunned up by the ghost ship, but yeah, the Absor is left to the wolves. The false promise only delaying the inevitable. I really feel like we're seeing the tanky thing again, like the the ogre, the wraith king, and yep. the dragonite just sitting in the front, very hard to kill. And even just like drum on dragonite has made him. I mean, he's going to be tanky no matter what, but the, the extra laning benefits that they're having in these early fights are, are it's really paying off. I feel like Secret have tried to force these fights too much because it's very much Weaver as a hero, and in this game, it's a timing thing. You are strong and scary with this defusal, and you need to just almost rush it. But being forced to keep coming to these fights has caused like a, a lot of kind of slowdowns in their overall strategy. Yeah, and, and they have good right clicks and all, and they can deal with the Wraith King, but it feels like they drafted a lineup that counters Wraith King and doesn't do much else past that. Because now, when they get in these team fights, I mean, look at their heroes. Kunkka is very burst heavy, especially uh, itemized and skill builded like this. Not that it's uncommon. It's all about Ghost Ship and Torrent Burst. Oracle is bursty. Mar uh, Marana is bursty. Like, everybody on the Dire team is pretty bursty right now, so there's just a, it's going to be a while until they're ready to take fights, even. Here we go. They're going to try and initiate on the Dragonite. 
And they got the damage to bring him down. Oracle coming in again, looking for the backlines, going on Puffy. He disarms himself to try and delay the inevitable, but he's still going to go down. And DK didn't even die. He had the wand charges, and he's got another blink. He may look to actually initiate behind the T1 tower where they've got a ward. Instead, they'll just take the T1 for now. Disastrous fight for Secret, considering they, they're the ones who chose to start that one off. Yeah, they, they just don't have the right heroes at this point. They threw a lot at that guy. I mean, maybe they didn't get a Weaver on top of him. Maybe they didn't get Star Storm to melee range, but it's just not very safe to do so. If they initiate in the wrong direction, they're just going to initiate, and they catch an Earthshaker now, too. It's just one by one. They're just getting picked off, and... Again, talk about timings. If that, that fight looks very different, if Mirana has a Maelstrom, which he's 600 away, if Weaver has a Diffusal, which he didn't have for that fight, he was a couple hundred away, and they start that fight without two very key items. There comes the Mana Drain on Sinking, though, yeah. so... He pops the one, but perhaps a bit too early. Reincarnation is not available. Can he kill the Beetle? He doesn't get it off him. So it does, in fact, go down here as Mirana goes charging forward. Won't hit the arrow on the Willow, but catches DK instead. Ghost ship goes flying. Catches one, not two, you are. Gets the TP out, but Fissure will cancel it. All right, finally works. And they crush that fight with Diffusal Blades. Amazing how big of a difference this makes against Wraith King. Okay. Even when he has 21 charges, it's very unreliable because if you you catch him with a stun, he can't pop those one charges. Yep. And even if you pop it right before you die, the guy that's, if he's attacking you with mana burn anyways, he might lower yes. it too much and you just go down anyways. Yeah, it, it doesn't, if it just increased your mana, it'd be a lot easier, but the problem is it heals you too, so chances are Weaver then gets an extra right click on to burn more mana. Yep, exactly. So with uh, all things said about how the last couple minutes went, uh, VTJ Storm got a really good timing there where pre, pre diffusal Blade, they got a lot of good fights going in their advantage. And now finally they're able to exploit that. So VTJ Storm isn't necessarily just going to be able to walk around and push wherever they want to. Yep. Oh, look at this. Uh, looking for the bounty runes. Throws the stun. Oh, this is going to be comboed so perfect. No, never mind. Gets off just in time. Ah, still an ogre there. Is there detection? Oh, well, there's a false promise, and this one will be a true promise to save his life. Oh, it's really close. If that curse crown goes off. That's probably yeah. a kill. He's able to get the time lapse off. Dispels. And a safe little bug. Queuing up a BKB. Definitely the right item this game. So as many stuns as there are. Absolutely. So even with them finally winning that team fight there is still a specter problem on the enemy team he's got a lot of net worth now he does he's not going radiance which is perhaps not so much the norm but doesn't feel it feels great it feels like he, the way the game plan's going is like we're going to keep on taking these team fights and this early yasha manta is going to allow him to just be that much scarier yeah i mean it's it's more hp it's armor if he goes raw radiance yes he does more damage he can farm better but it doesn't necessarily help him deal as well against uh, Diffusal Blades, Mana Drain, or Physical Right Click, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So, I, I like it. And he's got Blood Bust too, so it's not like his Right Clicks aren't bad. It might as well make him better. And in that way, Ogre is also transitioning well, maxing out Blood Bust now. Um, I'm sure he'd love to have an Arcane Boots, but uh, not, not a rich boy. Rezo is just having a, a great time. He TP's top, there's a lot of farm out there for him. Losing all these range creeps, no. He got like four of them denied. <laughs> Throws a dagger and Weaver bullies him a little bit, but all in all, I think Storm are pretty happy with where things stand. We'll be looking at their BKBs on their non-Spectre cores. Good night. Blinks over to the side. They get Vision with the Torrent. El Sepinex, he can't really TP out. There's an Earthshaker here too, so stuns galore. No escape here, but they can try and fight their way out, even if he can't TP on that. Puffy Force, he used False Promise on himself. You are still on the sides, getting chain stunned down. He's still alive for the time being. He gets the Breathe Fire Act, gonna reduce their damage. Then there comes the Terrorize. That keeps him alive even longer. He's in great shape all of a sudden as the Bramble Maze is on top of everyone. You are goes blinking in with the stuns. He wants the Kunkka. Unfortunately, Mirana shows up. That'll actually finish him off and snaking in the front lines. As reincarnated, he's helping bring people low. He's got this... Blink Dagger and the stuns to keep on chasing people down. Rezo on the Spectre though is on a mega kill streak. He is just absolutely unstoppable. It's really only the Weaver left standing. Well's the Mirana who did manage to get that one kill, but another big team fight victory. She feels like such a repeat of the previous game. Just tons of tanky guys running in the front, making uh, making it such a pain in the butt for Secret to take team fight wins. They can't kill the Dragonite. They eventually did. I mean, like imagine if this guy had a hood on Dragonite, he's actually unkillable then. Yep. And I'm fine that he hasn't purchased it, because I don't think he's quite needed it, but uh, th their damage output is just uh, leaves something to be desired. With the BKB, he will have a, a similar and 
higher impact and vulnerability too. Where he's definitely not going to be scared of any X combos when he's got a BKB. Oh, yep, so going to an X rush. I saw a Dubu do this in a pub the other day, but I thought he was just messing around. But it, it maybe could work out. Yeah, I guess it seems to be a thing for some of these players. Maybe it's like because of Haunt. Because if he uses Haunt, then uh, yeah. Radiance burn, it's boom. You can't blink anyway. So if he gets Ags, at least he can escape, he can initiate. Radiance gives him a lot of options, yep. I guess. True. Now, it's still pretty even comparing the teams in terms of the current net worth state, but just feels where it's distributed is where VGJ Storm are heavily favored. This top net worth Spectre, but a bit more even farm on the Dire side, and even their three position, their Mirana, is in good shape to scale well, whereas Wraith King, he's going Urn, he's going Spirit Vessel. He will not scale that well until he's level 20. Yeah, and then he gets the free double ulti, but in the same vein, preventing healing is going to be huge if you can throw the Spirit Vessel on somebody right before the um, uh, False Promise ends. I think that sh might prevent some of the healing. I'm not sure exactly how that one works, yeah. I guess. But he's got a dust ready. They could chase this. In fact, Snake King's going to be experiencing some boat. You need that Weaver for the Mana Burn, but he's not around. Does have a lot of one charges as well. Weaver's now teeping in. It looks like they're trying to delay this as Snake King will throw away his life. Is there an arrow? There could be for the immediate respawn, but the Haunt Illusion will block the arrow. Instead, we're going to see Shaker getting stunned up, trying to find a way into this fight here as Secret forced to full retreat. Rezo always hunting down Puppy every time he haunts on in, and Yapsa, no escape room as well. Echo Slam catches out four, but he's all alone. It's not quite as exciting as I maybe made it sound. It sounded good, it looked good. <laughs> some good damage, but it was, it was another death echo, which is unfortunately what seems Sad to happen. Yep. When they're that tanky, it is so hard to make uh, Urshaker the hero. I think this first pick, Urshaker is... Maybe he's still hurting them a bit against this heavy tank lineup that uh, VGJ Storm's going for. Yep. I mean, it's gold graph is still very, very even, but it just feels better as time goes on. Ogre sure picking up does. the GPM talent too. There's Work. more and more farm. Also may see Snaking adjust his build. He hasn't committed to the Spirit Vessel. He's got 2.4k gold up lane. And while he hasn't got his BKB just yet, and with Haunt down, Secret say we want to go and fight. They're unable to really go on the Willow. He's looking for that Terrorize, trying to catch the Weaver with it. Secret will have their Kunkka stunned up here, and blinking it is the Wraith King, who doesn't have ultimate, but he's not afraid. Or at least not showing any signs of it. No, Rezo, you... last set in here. <laughs> here to fight, though. Uh, Snake King got another blink in five. Mm -hmm. Decent air on Wraith King. Wraith he doesn't King have ultimate for trouble. 40. Yeah. May have some mana burn, too. You assert dominance, you run forward. Your opponents are going to stink you of ultimate, though, which it seems to be the tact he's going for. Puppy will get stunned up and should go down before he gets a chance to use a spell. DK doesn't... Oh, does have mana. Has a soul ring and one charges if he wants to chase for another stun. It is so hard to, to win these fights on secret side. When, yeah. when your opponents have this much mobility, they've got haunts, they've got blink daggers and all these cores that can just instantly initiate. Like, how is uh, Puppy supposed to protect himself? It's like he'd have to hide in trees the whole time or something. And on the other side, yeah, if you go for an X combo on somebody, it gives them this, like, three-second window where their opponents can react, drop haunts. Um, initiate on back lines, just yep. much harder for Seeker to take fights. Even a spell like Arrow, which could perhaps secure you a kill on her, like the respawning Wraith King gets blocked by a haunt. It just feels very hard for them to make these plays. Wraith King, uh, gonna go down. Had the reincarnation, but didn't have the chance to get it off. No mana, and was getting chain stun. Very, uh, very solo there. And he's actually changed up his item build here. He didn't finish the Spirit Vessel, he's queuing up an Orchid to secure kills on the Weaver. Uh, it's not going to work great against a BKB, yeah. but... Yeah, BKB, and he had a Lincoln queued up for a second ace, but now he's swapped back to a Maelstrom. We'll see. It'll be really good up. for Zoracle, too, if you think about it. Like, yes. if he lands a stun on Oracle, drop the Orchid, that's a dead hero. He can't I... cast Fate's Edict, he can't cast his ultimate. That's probably the benefit. And if Puppy is typical Puppy, he's going to buy a lot of wards, and he's not going to have a defensive item that can save him from that. I, I'm not sold on it just because it feels like all the cores are going to have answers for it, BKBs whatever it may ultimate it may be and oracle already seems to be dealt with by specter every time specter haunts oracle is just like forced to self ulti which is a True. win in itself but but the bloodthorn skeleton yeah. gods yep absolutely it's fun it'll it's be doing it good if you can get like a nullifier on top of it you get the silence True. with the nullify stop the bkbs which is absolutely a fine way to play the hero probably it's just you would have yes. weak hp i guess yep but there's talents that can kind of offset that the strength one for example Kind of this like pseudo glass cannon hero assassin or i mean you don't have to do the yeah. damage you just have to stun and silence them and stop them using items we're going for trinkles no uh no arcanes a little surprised myself but 
Man, Rez was attacking really fast. This is scary. And now he's queuing up Radiance, actually. Yes. Probably still fine. Yep. Lower miss chance. Top blink daggers. Push waves, all that good stuff. And he's ready to go. Push in the top lane. Team smoked out, looking for a fight. See if they can grab somebody, but uh -huh. smokes are breaking. What? He found him. Snaking instantly blinks on top of your wire. Got stunned up initially, but gets his BKB out now. Uh, they're going to find Puppy. Yep, Rezo immediately guns it for him, but doesn't quite get the damage needed to bring him down. And there's the reincarnation from Snake King. In a bit of trouble here, forced to back off as Ace's BKB is wearing off, though. That could make this fight a whole lot more difficult. Yapto just forced to Echo Slam. Not really the ideal one, but you are getting pretty low, just not low enough. Nice DK stun coming out on the Kunker while he chases down Fat on the Mirana. Wraith King somehow still alive. Snake King on a sliver of health. And Kunker cannot find the cleave or the torrent to bring him down he will actually end up actually does find it right before he dies he finishes off the wraith king but this fight does not go the way secret were hoping for ace in full retreat i mean it, it looked decent for secret for a while there i felt like uh, resolution was wasting a lot of time chasing the supports always feeling like he had to come back and cover his allies but just barely enough to oh, stay alive oh, this is really bad now doesn't have time lapse doesn't have bkb doesn't have a life very easy snag with the with the curse crown. I mean, this is that's a that's an ability. I think that it's um, it's easy to think like, oh, it's easy to be like you Manta, BKB stuff like that. But there's a lot of circumstances where it's just a very low cooldown, reliable stun on on heroes like this. It's Weaver. It's you know, it's, it's something that he has to deal with. And it costs a Manta sometimes to deal with it. Great team fight. Um, they're gonna end up taking Roche as a result, most likely, unless Seeker can get here in time. Could see a TP from Kunkka. Doesn't look like it. Looks a bit too late and yeah. not sure after how the last few fights have gone if you want to try and contest that. Are how are they going to kill Spectre now? There's low chance, man. Good question. 500 health talent. Almost relic. I mean, you get this Radiance, Manta, and then maybe a Heart later on. It, it really is a how do you deal with this? Because it's no longer just about Spectre's damage from her attacking, it's the dispersion as well. She gets yeah. this critical mass of health and you try and kill her with all your damage, you're killing yourself. Unless you have like some kind of lifesteal esque build, which is where like, you know, Mirana maybe needs to go some butterfly satanic type thing. Doesn't sound great. Also sounds like a lot of fun that she just doesn't have. I mean, she's just trying to finish up a, a yep. meal nerd Coming right out. Now. Puppy's being found and brought down. Went for another one in the mid lane here. Maybe somebody, yeah, yeah it looked like Urshika was already TPing as well. Uh, yeah. Well, scanning uh, tier two, see if they can pressure for more and this should secure them this. Um, and one, one support oh, kill. That Rezo mid, it's been oh. gone on. Doesn't actually hit the torrent here, but as an Aegis, I don't see this fully working. The arrow not gonna land and that means it's definitely not working. Even if that lands, he's got a second life. So imagine the idea was let's just burn through this Aegis, but they can't even achieve that and they're in full retreat. Yapsor doesn't have his Ag Scepter, doesn't have a blink. He has no real good escape here. If Snake King can find him, he doesn't quite guess correctly with the blink dagger. And instead, he's going to run into a Weaver, which is a bit problematic as Snake King is out of mana in just a second. Tried to wand in time, but only had a couple of charges, so. That was really close. He almost made it, actually. Yeah. The, the Orc, <laughs> the Orc, he's going to have so much int. It's hard to... Hard, for, hard to kill him before his mana's gone in this case, actually. But it uh, works true. out just barely for Ace. They traded with an Earthshaker. Not bad, considering the circumstances. It kind of looked like it was going to be a snowball of, of kill after kill. But with the, the Radiance finishing, unless I can snipe this. Does he spot it with the OBS? I think he did, actually. But that's the point sniper, though. So that's the Wraith King strat. You keep yourself very squishy, but get a lot of it. So exactly. there's no way you can burn your mana because you just die, you die so fast. It still worked, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's... It, it's got something going for him. I honestly don't think it matters this game. It feels like they are so far ahead having Spectre with these kind of items that I just feel like Seeker can't touch it. Like I, it Eventually he'll also be level 20 um, as this game drags and you're quite happy for the game to drag as BGJ Storm, you're the Spectre team. Wow, thought of being very safe down here. He actually definitely would have gotten caught there by Snake King if he didn't BKB, so definitely making the safe play. And that's basically what they have to do, delay things, push lanes, collect items if possible and try to kill Try to kill Spectres. Yep. Smoking up is secret. Where are they going to go? What's the play here? Got all these BKBs, and realistically, they have their probably best shot at winning this game if they can do something in the near future, but Spectres Radiance just came up, and Aegis still has two minutes left on it. Very easy for him to do the solo push thing. Same thing as before. Yep. Very standard Spectre play. 
But uh, Secret kind of reading things for now, unless they can grab this Weaver stun. It's gonna be hard, he's got a BKB. Go for the other hero instead. Yep, there's a leap away immediately, but still gets caught by the stun. Brought down, Fata. Doesn't really have much of a chance here. Rosso tried to get some heroes by himself, but they just TP away since he can't really do much about that. Definitely a really solid play to go for the Marana. You, you know his BKB is used when he split push bottom, so yeah. that was the reliable kill. Now we see BK get the level 20 talent. He's also actually going for an Orchid. Didn't notice that one until just now. Okay. Prioritizing these silences and I think that's, you know, good against a lot of these heroes. Shaker, he's not going to have a BKB anytime soon and stopping his spells from coming out can be very handy in its own right. Yeah, probably queuing up a Ghost Sector. That's his only solution, basically. He's at mid. Just force SVG to TP home. He's got a Buckler. Likely could become a Crimson Guard. And that's all he needed to be extremely tanky there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we might see a Courier Snipe yeah. on the bright, on the back Unfortunately, wave. Unfortunately, Ace didn't get on the way out, because it was carrying a gem. If he sniped mm. that, that would have been quite been a huge. big pickup. Almost level 20 in Weaver. Uh, the talent's not that impactful anyways, but... Yeah. Uh, oh, MSS has the gem. This is really bad. He's got the Yules. Is it going to time Chance perfectly? BKB. It's close. Yeah. Okay. BKB Force, you're very happy with that if you're VGJ. I made one. He is BKB four. So, what what do they even do? I mean, he pops BKB right. and he still dies so fast here. Yep. Sages is about to expire in 20 seconds, so could be careful if you're VGJ Storm. But same time, Rosso's full health. He's more than ready to fight. He actually probably just wants his mana back right now. Not a great way for that. Um, no tranquils or no uh, arcanes, but it's gonna queue up a Bastion and Abyssal next. So just feeling really confident. Just wants to be able to solo okay. kill people, which is it's a good way to go. And they've got triple BKBs, as we just saw, you know, these heroes are BKBing and just running away or TPing out. I feel like three kills have just been TP'd away from him. Um, mm -hmm. We saw two in the top lane, there was one earlier as well, where these heroes just TP out, so Basher yeah. will actually prevent that. Yeah, most of the time it's just really not the item on Spectre. You need something like a Butterfly or, uh, I don't know, Lincolns or something to deal with some random ability, but this game, it's, it's perfect. He's already got the Vanguard, just yeah, having, finish it up. Having already invested 2k in Vanguard means you're just, you know, putting that investment into a bigger item. Um, Ag's on Earthshaker, at least, so they do have the ability to Echo Slam uh, if their opponents do go high ground, but... Their, yeah. their gold advantage is being elongated here. Not in an extreme way. Still keeping I, it semi close, but. I'm also look good. like not sold on this because the orchids against this shaker. You're gonna see him flying in, and you can theoretically like. I want to say you could even click the orchid while he's flying in before he lands. Definitely possible. At least his I, hero model is usually pretty high, so you might not have your mouse in the right place. Yep. They're looking for initiation here. Oh, nice two men's fissure. Fire hits. Yeah, Absor goes toteming in, gets an echo sound fall up, but DK barely takes any damage. He shrugs it off. It's MSS on the willow instead. In a bit of trouble, the BKB Weaver chasing him down, but the BKB wears off, and now he gets the kill. Emma says, what a player. Still has a bug to worry about, but hey, he's got friends for that. Okay, Fissure causes some problems. Yaps are toting away. The great escape is on, but it's top lane where Yuar is on the high ground by himself with a BKB taking on mid one. He is just so damn beefy at this point. Puppy doing a great job here, but he's got BKB still, but... Uh, uh, the disarm stops the Frost Dragon from slowing him, and Shaker on the other side of the map managed to get away as well, so... They, you know, they seem to be cutting their losses, like Spectre uses Haunt and kills just one hero, an Oracle, or whoever, or, or the Mirana, but... At the same time, you're never really advancing. Oh, they finally found the Oracle here with the catch, so... If he goes down, that's a lot of woe stopping the push here. Might be harder for Seeker to stop and slow down the enemies. I just don't feel like they've got damage at all to kill any of these heroes. Yeah. They may be able to defend high ground, but it's kind of like, to what end? This gold lead is decent, but it's not even that insane, but it, it feels like a 30k gold lead right now. In goes the DK once again, just creating space for Rezo to hit some buildings, as does snaking on the Wraith King. He's now got level 3 ultimate, so he's almost just hoping to die here once again, as they take down the Oracle, a die back in fact, and there's the reincarnation. Thinking will not have that second line for a little bit. Does still have stuns and throws them out on the Wraith King. In goes Resolution, looking to take down mid one. Mid one getting very, very low. And as the Absol forced to kind of bail him out with an Enchant Totem. And hey, they take a Rex. They're happy to back off. They are getting to a really tanky phase. Like mid one is, is keeping himself alive a very long time despite not having any armor. Just like the evasion alone is is going far. But that's, that's pre Abyssal Blade. Mm -hmm. Um, that's that still still haven't had an orchid finished on Snake King, for example. It's coming. It's finally it's, coming, but it's been a while. It's also like he's keeping himself alive, but not killing anyone. VGJ Storm are keeping themselves alive, and you know, they'll kill a support or two, they'll kill a Marana. 
they'll kill buildings so it feels like they're using their sustainability to achieve something whereas Kunkka it's just like to delay which is what needs to kind of change if they want to stand a chance in this game but Daedalus level 20 talent on Kunkka you know he's getting a bit more damage so. okay he's basically that finisher gets one more last day to have it yeah not too bad um but even still, a lot of HP on the enemy team. Everybody's over 2k with the exception of Dark Willow. And there's a blade mount, so you gotta watch out for that one anytime you're it's going true. cleaving. And if you're in the melee range, uh, dispersion reflection too, so... Yes. Way more damage you're dealt. But in the same vein, Kunk is also super strong HP-wise, so... Yep. Maybe, maybe part of the solution. It's feeling better for Secret. They're slowing down BGJ constantly in these pushes. But they haven't gotten close to threatening the Spectre yet. Uh, I haven't seen that in a long time, so... Don't have a lot of faith going long to, long term. Hey, I guess in good news he's almost six slotted. I guess you know. Um, he can only you? get Spectre. He only gets so much more farm. Until he sells his Aquila and, and then, his Blade Mail. Yeah. I I, I, maybe you even want to keep your Blade Mail in a game like this. He gets gone on. Echo Slam comes, stuns him up. He's actually been chased on the Echo Slam. Oh Killed the free wave through the arrow could land. Okay, they, they got him. Yeah, okay, can they get? No, he's out. He uses. No. He jukes them. No. Oh. Looks so good for a second, but it just wasn't to be. He haunts, he jukes him, he completely destroys Team Secret. Two dead, it's gonna be a third. Weaver goes down as well. It was the perfect initiation in terms of how they played it. There was creeps that were gonna block the arrow, but the Echo Slam cleared the creeps, allowed a five-ish second arrow to land, and they still couldn't kill him. Dude, they went all in trying to blow him up with leaps and right clicks. They knew they had a small window to get the kill. And it just wasn't enough damage. He's got 2,800 HP. 30% of what they threw got reflected back at them. Man. And then the haunt plays. I, I thought for sure they were going to finish him off. Yep. Well, there's moments where he disappears and you're like, wait, he died? Oh, wait, no, he's still alive. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was insane. And, and surely that's the end. It really feels like it should be. Wraith King's about to hit level 20. So one of your kind of playmaking options as far as killing Wraith King is removed. This guy's Orchid finish, he's going spell casting items. And hey, there's a DK who's also mighty mighty fast. He's second on terms of net worth. 20k net worth DK coming at oh, you. If they can kill Wraith King here, this yeah, would be huge. Level 19 only. Kill that beetle, somebody get him level 20. Okay, no, he's got reincarnation. Had the mana for it just barely. He was on like 250. They may just kill him a second time though. He gets four staffed away. Next back though, here comes the Abyssal Blade trying to mess with the Kunkka combo. Not gonna succeed. Hits a two-man torrent. Nicely done here as Weaver. Trying to find a way into this fight, he gets caught out, he gets silenced, so he's caught by the Dark Willow, he gets solo killed essentially. As Fata trying to save the day, leaping in forward with the BKB, Mirana doing some really good damage here, but VGJ Storm, they smell blood in the water, they're buying back, they're trying to end this one, and with the Basher on Rezo, he cancels the TP it's out, and they GG. I mean, when they could kill Spectre bottom, it, it seemed so hopeless at that point, they just got, uh, just got out damaged at some point. They, they, it, so much of it felt like, Literally that first minute of the laning stage for for uh, for Team Secret. There. That level one, yeah, Murano who gets like harassed Arrow, out, yeah. doesn't have any options, doesn't have any help. Didn't have a salve. Yep. The person that came to lane didn't have a salve, and all of a sudden she yeah. couldn't contest any last hits. Couldn't harass the the Spectre. Was just trying to get close to the lane, and that completely shut down the Murano. But more importantly, let uh, Spectre off to an.